Here we are with batch number 49 of the EcoJa Tea Club. And we're kicking off our fifth year of the Tea Club with a singular batch of charcoal roasted honey oolong. And it's singular uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it, uh, the leaves were affected by the green leaf hopper, which makes each batch an anomaly because each batch of leaves that are affected by the bug have a different composition. And they turn out differently each time. And not only are the leaves themselves different, but they act differently uh, when they're being processed. Uh, both the process of oxidizing the leaves and then if they are roasted uh, post-production. It's all a bit of an experiment when it comes down to uh, bug-bitten tea leaves. And this batch is no exception in that respect. These leaves were harvested here in Jushan, uh, which is the southern border of Nanto County, right below Lugu. Low elevation, uh, summer crop. They were uh, cultivated naturally without any use of uh, conventional farm products. And uh, I imagine when they were raw, they looked pretty gnarly. Um, because they look pretty gnarly after you brew them. You can see that uh, they were uh, gnarled and stunted and also in their processing heavily manipulated to bring out the constituents within the leaves. One of the things about bug bitten tea is that the leaf tissue is scarred. Uh, it's more difficult to deplete the leaves of their moisture in preparation of oxidation. And I believe that these leaves were either tumbled uh, much more than usual in the making even of a traditional oolong or they might even possibly have been uh, lightly rolled before the kill green tumble drying or tumble heating process. So, uh, yeah, an anomaly batch. It was harvested uh, late summer 2017. It was allowed to sit for a year, and then our friend took it out and charcoal roasted it in a traditional charcoal uh, roaster bamboo basket style, uh, and then let it sit again for another year after it was roasted, or at least it did sit uh, for another year after it was roasted before we procured it. Some of the information is slightly obscure. Unfortunately, our friend who uh, procured the raw leaf and processed it and roasted has passed away earlier this year. He supplied us with our earlier batch of charcoal roasted high elevation tea that we shared, I believe in May of this year. So uh, we know less than normal about this tea than we, uh, than we usually do. Double check here. Yes, yeah, so I have about eight grams of leaf that I'm going to put in a uh, pot that's about 130 milliliters. Somewhere around the 1 to 15 uh, ratio of leaf to water. And I'm going to, of course, use boiling temperature water. The leaves have a lot of substance. You can use a little bit less uh, than you would use for high mountain oolong tea or even uh, a roasted traditional oolong tea as all bug bitten, tea, uh, bug bitten tea leaves, they have more constituents, it appears, or at least in experientially, uh, than normal, or uh, I should say, unbug bitten tea leaves. I'm almost sure, I would bet that I tasted this batch of tea uh, soon after it was made, before it was roasted. And it definitely had a bug bitten character. Um, I thought it was a bit, raw, you might say, or kind of rough in its character. It was something not quite balanced about it. It was interesting. I said to my friend uh, who had this tea that I would look forward to it after he got finished roasting it. And sure enough, uh, when we asked if there was any more of the batch that we procured, uh, the high, high elevation charcoal roasted tea, uh, I asked about I think August or September, I was given a sample of this. The first thing that uh, hits my palate is roast. Uh, very mellow, just this soft, smooth, smoky character, and then immediately followed by fruitiness. And um, again, kind of a, a cooked fruit or a compote, not very uh, distinct. I'm thinking like plums or uh, some sort of, of delicious pastry, <laughs> a baked good. Um, there's that mellowness and subtle complexity in, in the, 
the overall brew. And for our third brew here. Uh, the leaves have significant stamina. They'll go for a while. Good endurance on the brewing capability of the leaves. I would say six brews easily. Uh, with this ratio of around 1 to 15 leaves to water, uh, I think you're going to enjoy it for a good eight brews. Yeah, plums. So good. <laughs> really nice, thick uh, substance to the overall brew. Good viscosity. Definitely a mineral note in there as well. It reminds me of some traditionally made oolong from mainland China, like a dan. Really does taste like my experience of dan chong, which is limited, but it's that very uh, cured, uh, preserved fruit or cooked fruit, and a little bit of smokiness, a dry, um, slightly aged. This is aged now uh, over two years. So it just has a sense of maturity of all about it. Charcoal roasted honey oolong from Jushan, harvested in 2017, roasted in 2018, and we procured it just a couple months ago to share with you now at the start of our fifth year of the Tea Club. Uh, we think it's a good start and we are honored to be able to share uh, what is definitely the last uh, batch of roasted tea that will be made by our friend. So uh, we think you're going to appreciate it and please let us know what uh, you think of it and uh, tell us what flavors you taste and, and how it went with you, how you brewed it, uh, what the results were. Please uh, experiment. It's really worthwhile to experiment with the ratio and the brewing times. You get distinctly different results, as you probably know. Um, and see what works for you. It takes, um, it takes some exploration to find out what you think is the best way to brew each batch of tea. It's a real traditional oolong, uh, and if I use that terminology in my own experience, it's something uh, that's becoming harder and harder to find, and this particular batch stands on its own with its combination of factors of the green leaf hopper, its aging, its charcoal roasting, and the finesse and skill of traditional artisan tea that's made in this area. We're proud to be here in Jishan, Nanto County, because it is one of the most densely populated uh, areas of traditional artists and oolong tea makers. Please let us know what you think. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. Share our tasting video uh, with friends that might be interested. And again, comment on our blogs. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter as well. Uh, happy holidays and we'll see you next month.